We're gonna kill all of you. Across America, racism and anger once hidden in the shadows, <laughs> now pouring out into the light. In Santa Monica, a racist tirade over a parking space, a message for Muslims in a car in North Dakota. Okay, We're gonna kill, kill us, everyone kill us. you Muslims. A black army veteran targeting and killing white police officers in Dallas. A landscaper abused in Los Angeles. Why do you hate us? Because we're Mexicans? You do your lie, don't mean Words of hate which seem to be banished, now brandished more and more often. The FBI says in 2017, hate crime shot up 17%. The motivation for nearly 60% of those, the government says, was race, ethnicity, or ancestry. She didn't see it coming. Kevin Dunn's favorite aunt, Vicki Jones, had beaten cancer, but she could not survive hate. 67-year-old Jones and 69-year-old Maurice Stollard shot dead while grocery shopping, targeted because of their skin color, police say. They were black, the alleged shooter white. A white witness armed with a gun told his son what the shooter said while fleeing. He said, uh, please don't shoot or I won't shoot you. He said that um, whites don't kill whites. What do you think about what was said? It hurts. It's, it's sad. It's terrible. People have the right to just exist. The suspect, police say, could have caused far more carnage. Pastor Kevin Nelson says a parishioner saw him earlier at their church door. He bangs on it and pulls on it, then he backs up with his hand on the gun. So whoever would have opened it would have possibly have gotten shot and killed. His church began locking its doors after white supremacist Dylan Roof entered this predominantly black church, massacring nine people as they prayed. <laughs> Ken Parker knows something about the hate that motivated Dylan Roof. A Navy veteran, Parker says he was out of work and without direction. He joined the Ku Klux Klan and later a neo-Nazi group. Their biggest selling point, making him feel he was important, part of a bigger cause. They were looking at it as like, we're gonna have a race war one day and the more people on our side, the better. At the time, Barack Obama was president. Some white supremacists touted the first black president as the number one threat to white people. And we would even joke amongst ourselves, like, hey, we're gonna send President Obama a honorary membership to the Klan because he's our, big, our biggest recruiting tool. Then came the election of President Donald J. Trump. White nationalists cheered his anti-immigration rhetoric. Racists who feared what they call the browning of America began believing President Trump was the answer to their prayers. They want to have an all-white ethno state where white people just live by themselves. Seven months after Trump's inauguration, Parker virtually broke, paid $30 to help fill a bus of racists headed to Charlottesville, Virginia for a protest about a Confederate monument. They dubbed it the hate bus reminiscent of a bus from the 1960s created by another neo-Nazi. On paper, we were just going up there to like stand up for the white race, but honestly, I think everybody was just going to, you know, fight. Violence does happen um, and, a, and a woman is killed. What did you think at that point? Well, when I found out that she died, I was happy at the time. He and his cohorts giddy when an alleged neo-Nazi sympathizer killed counter-protester Heather Heyer. In their minds, the race war they wanted was beginning to materialize. But when the president condemned the attacks, he added, You also had people that were very fine people on both sides. How did that play in the group, the good people on both sides? No, honestly, some of them were real happy about it. And then Trump backpedaled on it a little bit. And then others in the movement, they got angry at Trump. Trump wasn't anti-Jewish enough. He wasn't doing enough for white nationalism. Michael German spent 16 years trying to counter domestic terrorism as an FBI special agent. There's always the counter argument from this administration that the leftists are violent, that Antifa is violent, and there's some evidence of that. How many people has anyone associated with the Antifa movement killed? None. How many has this side of white supremacists killed? Many. According to the Government Accountability Office, since 9-11, while radical Islamists were responsible for 27% of extremist-motivated deaths, the far right wing accounted for 73% of the deadly incidents, far more than any other group. In Parker's case, 
It wasn't law enforcement, but love that thawed his hate. So you decided that animosity wasn't the way and shunning wasn't the way, but the opposite. Mm -hmm, absolutely. I fight for peace, and uh, what better way to start in your own community? His neighbor, Pastor Will McKinnon, not only opened his arms, he opened his small, predominantly black church to Parker. His outreach washed away the hate.